Hello to all of my compounding friends and colleagues. My name is Brian Prince. I'm a compounding workflow and lab design consultant, and I specialize in USP 800 compliance. Over the years, I've had the pleasure of meeting a lot of your pharmacists and technicians. I've spoken at conferences and done webinars. Um, I had the distinct honor of speaking with the ACHC at their USP 800 education workshops. And in years past, I was the co-host of the Pharmacy Inspection Podcast. The purpose of this short video is actually to introduce you to our consulting services that you can find at compoundingworkflow.com. The heaviest lift of USP 800 compliance is really in the planning and the budgeting and the construction phase of USP 800 compliance. Now, there's no doubt you've got to write a set of SOPs specific to hazardous drugs and you've got to come up with a hazardous drug communication program. You've got to come up with new training modules and of course with that is employee assessments and that's very time consuming. But by and large the heaviest financial lift and time lift is going to be inside of this planning, construction, engineering, design phase. In my previous life I spent 10 years, a decade in the construction industry. My grandfather built houses, my father's an electrician. And so I understand a lot about the process of design and construction. And so one of our main goals as consultants is to make sure that your general contractor, your architect, your engineer, your HVAC contractor, a plumber, an electrician, any of these folks that come in on the project team, that they're all speaking the same language and moving in the same direction to truly understand what is a USP 800 compliant facility. And so that truly is the basis for our consulting. I'm going to walk you through a couple of examples just so you can get an understanding of the services we offer. I want to introduce you to the two main design components that we work through with the general contractors, the architects, the engineers. Those folks are going to be introduced into this project. Uh, and we do that through two design criteria. Number one is the floor plan. This is a two-dimensional floor plan. The architect is usually working on this and has given us this. And in this particular scenario, this is a new construction, but this could easily be uh, a replacement retrofit remodel type situation. And so we were given this vanilla envelope. And this particular pharmacy does all aspects of compounding, which is USP 795 non-sterile, USP 800 non-sterile hazardous, and then all aspects of sterile, which is 797 and 800. And even in this scenario, you can see they were doing a, a pre-sterilization uh, because they were doing what we now know as high risk. And so we worked through this design criteria based on the business model, because that really is the number one question is tell us about your business model first. Great that you've got a, a 16 by 20 room or whatever your room dimension size is, but really we wanna understand your business model first, and then we'll back into the design equation. Um, after we do this and we settle on what is a good working model for the floor plan, for the business, hopefully some opportunity for growth um, and, and just a, a great place to be with the design. Then we move into really the hard part, which is the supply exhaust program, because all of the rooms that we're now dealing with have different air change requirements, temperature, humidity requirements positive pressure, negative pressure, USP has given us uh, defined parameters for all the different rooms. And so of course, then we designed this. And then this is the roadmap with all the pressure maps, um, how we're gonna move the air in and out of the building, what can be recirculated and what cannot. And so this becomes a big piece of the pie. And I just wanna briefly give you uh, another piece that we sometimes do for projects just to help uh, mechanical engineers better understand what the process. There are different ways to move air. With USP 800, we're basically externally venting the air, which means we're taking all of that air and we're taking it out of the building. And we have to replace that, and more times than not, that takes a dedicated makeup air unit. This just happens to be a roof mounted unit. I've labeled the duct work in red, all, all of those things that need to be exhausted. The, the blue or purple just happens to be what is gonna be supplied. So you can see this is a rooftop example. Uh, there's a ground mounted example on another project where they, they had an A-frame roof and then of course we're kind of doing somewhat of the same thing, air in and air out. Um, and then that scenario can also go to what we call a split unit where the main air handler's inside, it's pulling its fresh air, but your condenser's outside. So the biggest takeaway here is that depending on the type of building, the type of scenario, the best way to move that air based on your building 
is how we plan for the air handling. And so these two dimensional and three dimensional models that we put together for the general contractors, the architects, the HVAC people, it just really helps everybody in the process understand where we need to go with USP 800 compliance. So I appreciate you stopping by the website. If we can help you, please give us a call at 228-239-6842. And again, this is Brian Prince with Compounding Workflow.